Good and welcome to the Shir tonight. What's the Shabbos Breishis? A gesunde winter, and um, start off with the dedication. It's been dedicated by Pinchas Rabin, Mazel Tov for your recent Yom Haledes on Zach Tishri. Leilich Yom Rishon Tovis, and in merit of Shnir Zalman Ben Sar Shoshana, amongst all the Yiddish Chayolim who are standing on guard for Am Yisrael in Eretz HaKodesh, so they should all be safe and carry out their missions with safety and come home safely. And they should be see Nosati Sholem Be'oretz, Oshchavtem Ve'ein Macharid. Let's go into our first question for today. And it's really not a halacha question, but it's something which has been on my mind a lot recently um, about the whole creation of Odom and Chavo. Where you have two story, two versions in the Gemara, whether it was whether Odom was created doi partzufin, created two faces back to back, or that Chavo was just a lower part of, of the body of Odom and then was separated and created, formed into another uh, body. Either way, the question uh, begs is, why did Hashem create the human species in this two-stage form, in addition to the two stages of creating first off the body from off from Inhardomo, then the breathing into a spirit of life, which is also, I believe, unique for Minha Odom, but the fact they created first the male, or first the Odom, and then created then a, a, a whole procedure of putting him to sleep and then separating, creating. What was the purpose for that whole exercise? That's that was the question which bothered me. And what you have on the screen is from Rabbeinu Bachaya. Similar ideas also I see also in the Al Sheikh, and they say the following that. Other other species, yes, there's a male and there's a female, but each one with the cow eats grass and the bull eats grass, and they have children, they have offspring together, but they don't have a care for one another. There isn't that feeling of of the, of oneness between the pair of that species. And this was the achievement of this whole exercise that, that the, the man should feel that his wife is part of him. She will feel that he is, she is, part, he, he is part of her or whatever. They'll, they'll feel that one, that, that unity, the feeling that that unit, because originally they were one unit. And that gives the, the human being that the natural uh, feeling of a, of a of a, a, a feeling of oneness of, of of closeness in mind with their spouse. That's that's the as a result of the fact that they were created the physically as one unit. Let's move on. So someone asks me about the uh, in many in, in Swedish communities. After Mairiv, before Oleinu, there is a, sh a Shir HaMailus. And he's asking, why don't, why don't we say it? So, and he gives me a reference to the Rambam. This is, as you can see on the screen, it's in Perik Zion, Halach Ches. It's the last Halach of, of, of Perik Zion. He talks about the Seder of Mincha, and also about a bit of Tachron after Mincha. And then he says, and Then you say the bracha before and after the respective brachas. Which is interesting. Let's, let's not go into that. And you establish when Esre. So he praises the idea of saying mischanin, to say some supplication, some form of tachnun, after mairiv. 
in the tour in Simon um, in Simon Reish Lamed Zion talks about Mairi, and then he brings something similar. He's quoting from I think Rev Amram Goen, and he writes there Bechos Av Oid Al Shem Rav Sholem Rav Sar Sholem Goen, the leaders of the yeshiva in Bovel, going back uh, 1500 years ago, they were known as the Goenim. So we, the most famous are probably Rav Sadja Goen. But the so Rav Amram is quoting Rav Sa Sholom Goren. Shemuta lipul alapai melavake shirachimim achat filas arvis. It is permitted to, whatever the word is, to prostrate yourself after myriv to and, and to to um, cautious etc. Even mitzivur. The chena minig babayis. Babayis aknes. Sorry, I cut off a bit. Maybe not plain. Be arvis kus me'er shabbos. So we're seeing both in the Rambam and in both in the Rambam and in the the tour the in of saying Tachnun after Maidu. So my understanding is that this minagasvardim to say Yeshua uh, Malus after Maidu is a form of Tachnun. It's not they don't put into fields of time, but it's it's some kind of bakosha. Which would there now? It's interesting because many of the Bukhabalim must fired him and they 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 bring this minik. They are, even Ashkenazim in Israel, also or quite a lot of them are also saying this extra mizmer after Shmonesra before Olayim because in Israel, the minik has fired him seems to have been accepted by many Ashkenazim also in, in numerous areas. It's a separate discussion. Having said that. There is a concern about saying the fear, I'm, I'm, I'm saying Tachnun at night. And the reason is because there's a time of Dinim and there's a time of Chesed and of Rachamim. And at night is a time of Dinim and therefore it seems to be inappropriate to start challenging the Dinim at that time when they've kind of got their I don't know Chas Hashan to use the word free reign but there's a certain that's 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 that time, not to not to interfere with that time. So this is the background to what we have here in Shekhan Aruch. This is on the Alt Rebbe's Shekhan Aruch and Simon Kuf Lamed Aleph. So that's talking about Tachnun. Ein and after Nefilas Apayim Balaylo Mibtam Hayodu Ale Yoidim. Anyone who knows the Alt Rebbe's language in the Shekhan Aruch, this is a euphemism for Alpikabola. In the references they have to the Rekanati, Reb Nachman Rekanati, who was a Makubal. And so this is the, I'm not, not saying Nefilas Apai, not to say Tachnun at night. Then he says, therefore, if Mincha, if Mincha spilled over Ad Halailo, don't say Tachnun after Mincha. And then he says about skipping of Inu Malkeinu. And this is because in Nusach Ashkenaz, when Avinu Akhenu is said, it is said before Tachnun. Therefore, he says, if you have this dilemma, so then skip Avinu Akhenu in order to be able to say it um, uh, Tachnun before nightfall. Then he goes on. Okay, so meanwhile, I just want to conclude this point that my suspicion is that the reason why the Alter Rebbe does not bring this in the Siddha, although it is mentioned in some of the Siddhuri Harizal, is because of this word of not saying the philosophy in Belaylo, not to say Tachanun in Belaylo. You know that the in of Psuki de Zimra, the word Psuki de Zimra means verses of praise, but we also know that the Zimra becomes a lot of pruning. This is brought in, I'm sure it's brought in Kutatera, etc. The in of cutting off, cutting off the undesired. Uh, undesirable extra growth. So there is a cutting off. Oh, this is the tilim is a power has a power to cut off undesirable growth, and that's that's part of the cheshbon why we don't say tilim by night generally. I, despite I'm saying that, but as Hashem towards the end of this year, if we have time, we'll say a couple of tilim because it's an emergency matzu. Um, as an exception, but but we don't say till and This has all got to do with this. 
because Balailo, it's this, it's this man of it's shachas to dinim, and therefore um, it's not the time to, to 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 start cutting away. Now I wanted to address here Kevin de Osle Yodon, since we're talking about this. What is the story about saying Tachnun after Shkia? And I believe there's a there's a perception that in Chabad we hold that you can say Tachnun after Shkia so long as it's Bein Hashmoshes. Now I'm going to read this very carefully. Omikol Mokoim says the Alter Rebbe here. This about not saying Nefilas Apayim Balaylo is only Bevad Aylail. But in during twilight, you can still say Tachnun. Now he's skipping from after Mincha. He's skipping now to Chslichis in the morning. Yeah. Now, this is something if <laughs> we don't see it Bichlal. Um, but in the Slichis, towards the end of Slichis, I'm sure Rabbi Agyalf will confirm that in the Veld, they put, put their head down at the end, Vayyema Dovid El God, Rachem Vachanun. In Chabad, we don't do it. And it says there, and it is in little words, in brackets, it has the uh, the instructions don't have Aleph base, because otherwise we would sing, we'd be saying that a part of the Nusach, Ein Lipoil. So it's just instructions that we don't do Nefil Zabayim in Slichis. But here he says, Minig Ashkenaz, Lipoil al Pneim al Bebelel Ashmoires, or Shmurois, Hoil Vuhu Korev Luyem. Now, just think for a second. The day La Halocha begins from Alos Hashachar. This is interesting. The day ends by Tesakachovim, and according to the Goinim, Tesakachovim is some uh, 20 something minutes after sunset. The day begins at, at dawn, which is 72 plus minutes before sunrise. So it's not parallel. It's not symmetrical. The beginning of the day, the beginning of Yoim, is from dawn. The end of day is Sesakachovim, which is shortly after sunset, not 72 minutes after sunset. All right. Now, he says the minig is to say to say Tachnun, Lip Pnir Philosophim in Sliches, Hoyl who Korivalyim, although it's not Mamish Day, but it's Korivalyim. Yes, Noya Gin Lahale Laharich Bisliches, Ad Nochen Hayim. There are those who don't say Tachnun in Sliches whilst it's still dark until it's Nochen Hayim, until it's clearly day. And only then do they say the philosophy. So here we're seeing that there is a hesitation. Even though it's you know that it's after dawn, but you're not sure whether it's Mahmajah. So you don't you don't you wait with the slicha. You know what you late, you wait with you stretch out the slichas. So that the end of slichas, where there is Nephilosapaim, is when it's Mahmash clearly day. In the Sefer Hamin Hogim, where it says our minhig of not to do nefilas apayim in slichas give us a reference to this line over here that we don't do nefilas apayim in slichas because of the concern of saying slichas. I'm oh, oh, sorry, we don't hear me of doing nefilas apayim at night after dawn before sunrise. So, Lanias Daiti. If you're concerned after dawn, but it's not Mamish day, and you don't say Nefil Sapaim, how much more so you should be concerned by Lilo after after Shkia, because it's already um, it's already you know you're going into Nacht. Yeah, so the, it, it, for the same reason why it says in Sefer Amin Hogim. That we don't do nefil sapayim um, in slichas. That very same reason should say that we should not be saying tachnun after shkia. So, although the first opinion here is that's okay to say tachnun and shkia, but I'm seeing that the meiser we are that I mean, Hogim is following the second opinion that we are concerned to say nefil sapayim 
by Sofrik Laila. So that should apply to Mincha the same as uh, as by by Slichus. Okay, that's a Maimer Hamuske. Um, Rav Yirmi is asking, is Zmanas Dinim only until Chatzos Laila? Probably more so, more more until Chatzos, and that's why uh, the Moshe is saying till him, etc. After Chatzos is okay. You're right, but possibly there may be a Madregas in that. Uh, in, yeah. All right, let's move on. So in Yona de Yoyim, unfortunately, I'll say the Hayoyim, people are uh, very anxious. And um, Hashem, I mean, uh, what ha- all the scares which happened on, which were going around about Friday, Baruch Hashem, as we went through um, Ruika Haidt, um, and as as uh, one person said, that their their kavona is to the kavona of the tzadik neged is to make people frightened, to to demoralize, and we have to have the uh, the strength not to not to fall into that. Koponim, so it's a large city in Europe, and the there's a shliach there. So one of the shluchim is a higher profile. He has a, a bodyguard. But this Shriach is not a Nat Madrege, so he doesn't have a bodyguard. But he was advised to carry with him a piece of uh, either telephone or something in case he sees something uh, happening, he should be able to call for help right away. It's on Shabbos. So, of course, you could say stay home. But that's for sure not the Eitzah. And therefore, he's asking a question. Is there a way and he's allowed to carry with him some piece of equipment. So, this is an interesting um, question. I've had this years ago also. And so when you have someone who's a choyle, Rahman al-Islan, who needs to have a medication in case they need it, so then a choyle is allowed to do a melocha de raise So therefore, a choyle who, let's say, is dependent on he has to have uh, glucose in case they have a hypo um, so then they have a bit of glucose in let's say in the hat or inside their sleeve and so then they can go in the street and in case they need they have it with them so that that's just, that's you know, but that's because there's a choyle then you have the people who are let's say had solar etc they may be called for figure and effort here it's a bit different he's uh he's not a had solar and bar hashem is healthy just to be able to walk in the street to go to shul. So can he rely on the head of carrying this phone kalachayat? So a very interesting shuv of Reb Meisha Feinstein, where he says, he was asked, if you can see the date, it's Tov Shilam and Tess, yeah? They had solo chavre, about carrying with them a walkie-talkie. No, the embassies. You could tell the Hatzola guys, listen, you're on duty, so you have to stay home near a phone. You mustn't leave the house. But he says, if we'll do that, then you can expect that the numbers who will, uh, how do you say, join Hatzola will be dropped dramatically. No one wants to volunteer to be uh, grounded for hours on end, even with a rotor. So the Rebosha comes with a brilliant idea. He comes up and he says, this this walkie-talkie to be a member of Hatzol is a chashivas. So like you have um, you can have an ornament, a medal which you're allowed to wear because that's an adornment of your persona, you're your chashiva person. You have to go around with a medal. So to walk around with a walkie-talkie it's a, a member of Hatzol. So that makes a modem chashiv. So it's a tachshit. A person is allowed to wear a tachshit. So they, that's he comes up with this idea that they would be allowed to wear their walkie-talkie in a visible way, big um, dafke, dafke visible, because in this way it's a tachshit, um, adding to the chashivas. Now that's it's interesting. I don't know whether that is a practical solution nowadays, because nowadays I don't think walkie-talkies are are bichlal, uh, I think they're obsolete now. Now it's, it's phones which you keep in your pocket. So I have to look at other etzes. Um One etzer I would say is if you, uh, if you, if you, if it's a short walk and you can make a point of never stopping, 
in the Rishos Rabim. If it's a short walk from your house till the to the shul, let's say, going from Rishos Yochid to Rishos Yochid without stopping Rishos Rabim, that would be an Isad Rabbonon. Then it would be Isad Rabbonon Chilach I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how how to work that out. Um, I was told that the Hatzola members here at Isis Avril, they would actually um, have one at home and one in shul, but they don't carry uh, equipment with them in Rishul Sarabim. All right, let's move on. A difficult question. A person, uh, um, there's a commode in the, in the, in the room. For someone who needs it, obviously, and the question is from not necessarily the, the, the person who needs it, but the other person who's there with them, are they allowed to say words of Torah and, and filler, etc., right in the presence of that, where that, that piece of furniture? So let's read the Shukhan Aruch and Sima Pei Gimel. It's, it's, it's actually in Nisha Zeglad. Bnei Odom, this is the Lashon HaMerachash of the Mechaber, Bnei Odom Shiesh Lehem Safso, Nokov. The people who have a bench, a seat, a stool, which has an, a, a hole in it, and Vniftin Olav, and they use it for relieving themselves. Muta Rikres Kriyat Shema Kenegdoi, it's permitted to read Shema in the presence of that stool. Kevin Shein Hatsoyal Anekev, because the stool itself is clean. Vagamein Hagraf Tachas Anekev, and the the chamber pot is not there. We owe each anekev tomid mechusta badaf. Plus, the opening is covered with a with a lid. Now this this is this is the loshon hamachaver. And on this on this basis, it seems to be no problem. A kamod has got a, a closed lid; it's not a problem. The loshon hamachaver is a source of the mordechai. And in the mordechai, it seems to be that he sees this as a base hakisa. And therefore, you would have to keep a distance of Dal Damas from it, etc. And this Mognavrom and the Taz, they, 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 uh, they challenge the, the simple presentation of the Shulchan Aruch, and they are Machmir. So now I'm going to read the, the Alter Rebbe follows them. Now let's read the Alter Rebbe carefully. So they've got this stool, which is used for relieving, this is the ta from the Taz. So they have little stools for the children who aren't able to go to the facilities on their own. So they have So then one should have them covered at the time of davening, etc. Or you would see him a chedesh and mispal, or take him out, or learn when you're davening alone. Afilo him nekim, but oichem al gam, even they're clean. Shekim and shehem yuchodim lifnis aleihem, because they're used for that purpose. It's got the status of besakis. Shafilo ein beit soya, even if it's clean, it doesn't have any soya, because it's got the status of besakis. It's soch lahachik mimen adal damis. Now that's that, that we're basically is saying that that piece of furniture, even though there's no trace on it of anything, but still it's got a status of besakisa and it'd have to be covered, or you'd have to go um, um, a distance of dialed amis, and if it's in front of you, and similarly, we see the Mr. Bruna after he quotes the Shukhan Aruch. And he says, Aval Harbi Achroinim Choilkin Olov disagree with the Shekhanaro. And they say there's got a din of Besakisa Yoshon, since it's here. And therefore, one shouldn't say Shema or Dabodova Shabakrusha in its presence. Then, but then he yeah, added, all right. So now, my question here is, and we're going to go, what well, we read one more source, and whether the fact that it's got a seat. Which is a padded seat, which is uh, it makes it look like just like a regular piece of furniture. Is that considered enough to call it covered? So this the Mr. Brura refers to this. Uh, this is the Der Chaim. Although it says it's Shara Koilo, that's because in the volume of Shara Koilo they also printed the Der Chaim. Um, so Der Chaim, you have the um, uh, the source. Um, uh, it's Simon Chavov, um, Seif Chavov. 
סף של העושים, נכה ושום מעמיד עם גרף ונפטן על זה, אף על פי שהציעו הגרף ושומו דף על הנכה, even as a lid on it, still that, that, that um, stool has got a dinner base, a kiss, so you'd have to count it. V'nira li, d'im asaf sol meyuchad li yishivo, if it's really a, it's a seat. K'moi kiss se shem yachtin li yishivo, it's like, it looks like a regular chair. V'mechus se bekar, and it's got a cushion on it. V'kshe tzorich l'adovor, meise hakar she olo, when necessary, they take away the cushion, and then they would use it. Then he says, Then he says, it is okay. So, my, my feeling, my, my tendency is to say that what's the difference whether the cushion is a totally separate unit or the cushion is, is hinged onto you know, the back of the chair, but it is covered. And that's what he, he said. Therefore, it's covered. So first of all, first of all, the Mechaber says it's okay. But even if you take the, the it's had Hamach Miriam, but still you're going to see, you see here that if it's covered, it's okay. That if it's covered with a, with a cushion, it's okay. Now you're asking this cushion called the cushion which covers. All right. I think the Mokim one could rely on, on this to say it is adequate. And therefore, a commode, which looks like a regular chair, which has got a padding, a padded seat or whatever, which ostensibly looks like a regular piece of furniture, I think uh, to, it, would, it would be permitted to uh, say Shema, etc. in its presence. If you want to be machmed to cover it, um, that would be more glad, but it's, it could be a big tircha. A person who's taking care of a person who needs such a thing has so many other things to worry about. I'd like to uh, you know, try to make life easier for them. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. Next question. Chassidim of yesteryear, not so long ago, um, we used to see the Moshul Rebendel Futafas, others would take the talus and put it over the front, over the head, and say the brocha, and then take it off and twist it round to the back, and then um, put it round and do atifa. Uh, wrap it round. So, why why has this become basically obsolete? So, it's quite an interesting topic. Michal, I would like to say that uh, with the atifa, I see people are don't, don't you know very relaxed in the, the atifa. They so, some people are, are standing there and talking whilst they're in the middle of doing it. That's what that's, you know, but it's another parasha. But just a little, uh, just covering their eyes with it. Just the artifa is, is to be, be thrown over the back, the, the left shoulder, um, and you stay in that position for uh, which is a couple of seconds. And, to, and they say, whilst you're doing so. Um, Good, but that's another discussion. But meanwhile, the timing of the bracha. So now we have two l'shoynas of the Alter Rebbe in the Shulchan Aruch and in the Siddur. In the Shulchan Aruch, you can see here the Loshan, Uchshayaschil lehisatev, koidem shehisatev legamri, yevorech mu'umer lehisatev etzitzis. As you begin wrapping, before you wrap yourself totally, you'd say the bracha, in the Siddur, the Alter Rebbe also has Hilchas Tzitzis, and he says you should do the Atifa standing, the Baruch should be standing, the Chadchila. You should say the Baruch before you begin the Atifa. So you've got a very, very clear difference. In the Siddur, he says, before you start. In the Shechon he says, once you start, before you do it completely. So it's, there's a clear, uh, how you say, difference between them. To explain a little bit more the reason, the reasoning behind these two shittas. The two shittas. We know that there's a concept of every birchas ha mitzvahs should be oiver lasi yoson, should be said prior to the act. I believe I heard from a shver once 
the idea of machshova dibur You think about the mitzvah you're going to do, you say the brocha, and then you do the pu'ul, you do the mitzvah. Okay. So that's generally the rule, mitzvahs. I know there's exceptions in Tzios Yodayim, and Tlokas Neiris, but generally that's the halacha. Kol bechas mitzvah should be over last also. But we don't make the brocha too far removed before. So we won't say the brocha holding the tefillin in the hand. We'll have the tefillin already on the on the arm, just about ready to tighten. And that's when we say the brocha. Because it has to be over and not over the over. It shouldn't be too far removed before the mitzvah. Here there's a fascinating discussion in Rishonim. Where, what is the mitzvah of tzitzis? Is the mitzvah of tzitzis a parallel to the Avera of Shatnas? Shatnas, if you put on a baguette, which has wool and linen, so the second you put it on, you violated the mitzvah of the mitzvah of The parallel to that would be the moment you put on the tzitzis, the garment with tzitzis, you have done the mitzvah. You can take a different approach and say like this. The mitzvah of tzitzis is like this. If you are wearing a four-cornered garment, now you have a duty to go and put in tzitzis. But you're not a violation. The regi you put it on, you have now a duty, but it's not, it's not a violation the regi you put it on. There's a mitzvah now to put it in tzitzis. A practical consequence of this is if a person came, came, comes to shul on a Shabbos morning, and everyone wearing a talus is un- embarrassed to sit without a talus. The only talus in shul is one which has got posel tzitzis. So in the week, he's not allowed to put it on because he's mevatel mitzvah tzitzis. On Shabbos, he's allowed to put on the talus. You say like this. You're putting it on. Now, okay, go, go put in tzitzis. But Shabbos is on us. He can't, can't put in tzitzis. So he's allowed to put on the talus with the posel of tzitzis. He's embarrassed. Okay, fine. But this is this is this is because this is the thinking here. It's also in the Mordechai, in in in, in uh, Mordechai, I think in Menachos, where the whole sugi of tzitzis. But at any rate, the, this is this, this is to say that tzitzis is not like shatnas. Tzitzis is a regulator. The mitzvah of tzitzis is a regulator. It's a, it's a moment later. As a result, we have here a business of over the over. If you make the brocha before you do the atifa. So then it's over the over. It's two, it's two stages before. You haven't even put them on to say, oh, now I put them on, we have here to put scissors. And that's why the Shechon takes the opinion that you should, once you've started, before you complete the Atifa, okay, that's when you say the Rocha. For some reason, the Alta, now there's a different opinion in Rishonim, some will hold, like the mitzvah of tzitzis is parallel to sharpness. This is in Yavomis Daftadik who seems to take the view it's the parallel of of of, of uh, sharpness but all right okay now let's take a look now so now what did the elter chassidim do they followed the siddha we know that the siddha was written by the altar ever after the shulchan aruch and we pop when there's a, a conflict of opinion we'll follow the siddha and therefore they say since it says in the siddha to make the bracha before the atifa so that's what they did they made the bracha with a talus, with a with talus over the head and from the front. So they had two makifim, made the brocha, and then they used to do the atif. Now let's take a look in the Hayyim Yayim or Hey Elu, where it says the following Our custom in wearing a talus goggle, you put the talus goggle on the shoulder, on the right shoulder, then you're biting the tits. By the way, I'm going to confess. On the second day of Yom Tov, I don't always put it on my shoulder. And my, so my, my, I just have the, my talus like, like on the table. It's all messed up. Um, so I just check it. With, uh, sometimes I'm feeling very pious. I'll put it on my shoulder also. Okay. Um, then we take the talus from the shoulder. We kiss the, we spread out the talus, kiss the edges of the talus, swing it round from front to the back then you start the bracha of his atev at tzitzis once it's on, on, on your back siyum ha bracha somuch lekrichas beis kranfes you mean sviv savore la choyra v'tzad so the way you get the impression 
is that you start the bracha when it's already on you from the back, but you haven't done the atifa yet, and you say the bracha, you stretch out the bracha until you're at this point, just before you throw it over your shoulder. So it looks like the hayoim yoim is a kind of compromise, trying to incorporate both the siddur and the shukhan aruch, that you start the bracha just as you're beginning to wrap yourself. Yeah, or we could say just a moment before, but then you start the bracha there, but you continue with the bracha as you are just about to wrap yourself. Um, so I think that's what, to my, I, all right, so what does it mean? This atif is wrapped around your body, but you haven't got thrown over your shoulders. That could be how it's fulfilling what's written in the Shukhan, in the Shukhan Aruch. Yaschil is atif, koedim she is atif legamri. Uh, it's not totally uh, clear in the Hayyam Yom. I know you can argue with me about it, but it certainly um, says that the broch is not when you have the towels in front of you. That's no question, yeah? That when Minig Achsidim Hayyam yesteryear would be to have to make the broch whilst it's in the front. But here it says clearly you swing it round, and then you start the broch. Therefore, that's now with it. Then he refers to this whole Lomdus, which I've been telling you, the Machlekes. Or is showing him with a comparison to Shatnas, etc. This is discussed actually in the Sheedus Yehuda, the Alter Rebbe's brother. There's two tshuvas which kind of seem to be in kind of, and, and, and opposite positions about this. And then the Divrei Nechemi, who was a contemporary of the Tzemach Tzedek, a colleague of the Tzemach Tzedek. So this whole lomdus is discussed there at length. But the Bikitza, so that's that's the the background to this whole story. Okay, let's move on. So someone asked me a question, and we know in Gemara it says, Chayole based David, Kol HaYotem LeMechemes based David, get Krisus Nekoistev Le'ishtay. That the soldiers in the uh, the army of David HaMelech would write a get to their wives before going to battle. Um, is Why is that not done, or if, or not followed nowadays? So, a couple of points about this. One thing is that we have here one of the uh, Davin's very regular in our shul. A beautiful vice is the Kadasya or the Union um, head of the Gitin department. So he told me that during the war, Rav Abramsky was in London, and there they were Yiddish boys who were drafted. You know, Yiddish men who were drafted into the army to the british army to go and until you into europe and he did make a lot of effort that there should be uh, at least uh, authorization a written authorization in Besdin, that they had given permission that in case they do not return after x amount of time the best should write a get for their wives and during now i might get, get the facts right slightly wrong the the Bestin's premises was in the East End at the time, and the premises of the Bestin had a direct hit, was bombed during the war. And Rav Abramsky, afterwards, obviously, he made his way to the Bestin. It was very important for him to search through the rubble that there was a safe. And in the safe, that's where they had those documents. And it was it, it was so important for him that those documents are still intact. So that's just an interesting thing that they they made some those boys who were drafted into uh, the British Army, those who were conscientious, so they did do something to enable that they were best that the best and would be able to act on their behalf. Then, whilst I was doing search, uh, I came across a long um, article by the late, late Rav Goren. And he talks about this, and he said that they don't, that, that, that this was once brought up, and the the uh, volunteers to go for, to fight, and we're talking about in the, in the 50s or the 40s, if they would have to write again, they, they would be, that would be a, a terrible deterrent. They wouldn't want to go. Um, they, they weren't ready to do that. So it was like a you know, voluntary uh, army, and therefore they 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 didn't didn't agree to do that. 
But then it's, it really, uh, he has a harrowing report of uh, Gush Etzion. I don't know, um, I'm sure many of you know the, the story of the Gush Etzion, how they were completely surrounded by the uh, by the Jordanians, by the Arab Legion, whatever, and there were there was a terrible massacre there. And it looks like he got permission. He writes, "I got." He was, uh, he got permission to go in. Yeah, with a blindfold, he went into the premises of where it took place, where this massacre took place, to be able to uh, help identify uh, and to be able to permit permit the the wives to. Uh, to, to remarry but um just basically that's that seems to be the husband that it would be very uh very discouraging and the other thing is that Baruch Hashem um, is honestly um, is honest wissen, but the ability to identify and to keep track is nowadays so much more sophisticated and therefore um the the, the need for such a thing is much less than uh, than it was needed in the times of David Melech. At any rate, um, it's not done, and uh, and uh, as I said earlier, everyone should come home b'shlemus uh, in, in good health. Okay, someone asked me what to do with the old lulav. So here you have in Simon Tafri Samachdalad, Yesh Misha Oimer. And he refers us to Simchof Aleph. This is that that the article used for a mitzvah, even though you're no longer using it for the mitzvah, still you should treat it with respect. And therefore, you shouldn't tread on it. So the you the old Hishanas and the old the old lulav, etc. Um, to treat them with not not to, not to treat them with disrespect. Then we have this is from the uh, the Machaber Shochanor Simetofer Samar Dalit, and then here we have in Alter Rebbe Shochanor Chichas Pesach Simet End of Simetof Mem He. He says the following: Yesh Noagin Lisreif Arova Achometz Barova Shechov To Oisib Eishan Arab. Now those who have the minhag to use the arovas from Eishan Arab to use them for burning the chometz. Something used for one mitzvah should be it's good to use it again for another mitzvah. Some use the arovas of the lulav um, for the burning for the baking of the matzahs. Um, by the way, if you want to do that, don't keep your arovas in a plastic bag. They will they'll just become all rotten and, and mushy. You have to leave them uh, somehow in a in a dry place uh, to let, let them let them breathe and evaporate and you know, dry out. But it's interesting because the difference here whether to use the arovas for bur- for burning the chomets or to use the arovas for baking matzahs. Arovas the heshanas is kind of a more in you know, of, of of getting you know misuk hagvures, and therefore I think that could could be the reason for using it for for burning chametz, whereas the uh, a lot of us of the lulav is a mitzvah sase, and therefore the parallel to that it should be used for baking matzahs. Having said both of this, uh, I heard that the Rebbe would not wait for uh, erev Pesach, and at some time during winter it was taken down to the incinerator in the basement of seven seventy. It was burnt uh, some as it wasn't dafka. We were left till erev Pesach. No, so the key is you, that you don't, you shouldn't you know, use them in, 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 some people use them for for schach, um, but uh, not to disgrace them. That's the key. It should be, uh, if it has to be disposed, it should be disposed in a, in a, in a bag, in a, a respectful way. Right. Okay. So now someone asked me why eggs are parev and not fleshic. So it's an interesting question. And what I saw in Encyclopedia Talmudis, he talks about this. And although, so the, the, the question is, if you have a, if you have an egg born from a nevela, uh, if, if, if you find an egg inside a chicken, 
um, that yeah, the, the egg is, is, is sometimes is fleshic, etc. So why why is if the egg can be fleshic if it's found inside a chicken, why is the egg or not normally why is the egg power? Of? And basically he says that really Bosso Oif Bacholo is Midrabonon. This is brings from Poskim that uh, cooking milk, um, um, meat and milk is written in the Torah and Les Vashung di Bachalevi Imoi. But um but um a, a chicken or a bird to cook a bird in, in, in milk is the Isra Drabonon. And therefore they weren't so machmir on uh, on on an egg because it's that's one one step removed because it's the drabonon or because each one has got um, the, the the meat and milk is more lenient than uh, than treif in the sense that from a treif a bird if a treif for a bird legs an egg so then the treifus will go over to the to the egg also but meat and milk it's only when there's a combination until then it's both of the mamuta. So these are the two reasons given why an egg doesn't have an issue of, uh, doesn't have a status of fleshy. Yes, of course, there's a question about that. that what, what about milk? But that Torah for sure is matter milk and uh, not as fleshy, yeah? But, uh, all right, fine. Um, one last question which we're going to deal with, then we'll say a, a, a bit of tehillim and we'll say a tefillah. And that is, someone asked, if it, is a gayer culpable for crimes committed before he or she converted. So, so if a gay smashed a window, but there's a guy and then he's been a guy, does he now not um, not have to pay? No, I'm a different person. So one one uh, perhaps rule of thumb would be the kind of thing which Chuba doesn't help. If a person breaks a window and says, I'm sorry, comes to Bezdin, he still has to pay. Uh, and if a if a person had done a crime which is high of Mrs. Bezdin, so then he'd still have to uh, have the punishment. It doesn't help if he'll, he'll stand in Bezdin and cry and say, "I'm sorry," and I'm, I will never do it again. Uh, that would not change his uh, his verdict. So once there's already been a, a psak of Bezdin, on uh, let's say if a gay had if a goy had committed a crime which which is um, warrants capital punishment. And then his Megayer, then he wouldn't get off the hook. Um, some things, there will be a difference between the, the, the verdict for a Goya for a Yid, that may change. But, um, but that's, that's the general the general psak, that the general guideline, that the things which are, uh, which Shuva would help, then, okay, so the, then also Geirus, is a different person, would take away the guilt. But if it's something which uh, Shuva won't um, change, so then that liability will remain even after Geras. Someone's asking, what about the Esrig? I'm not able to make um, Esrig jam. After some time, they shrivel and shrink and become brown. They can be, they've been dead. The truth is that even now you could, yeah, I, I also, it's, it's nice to use, some people use them for, for Basomim. Um, emotionally, it seems to be wrong to uh, just throw them away now, but Minhadin, just if they're wrapped respectably, they would be able to be bent even now, but certainly once they are uh, turned brown, yeah. All right, I'm going to take a tilim, we'll say a couple of kapitalach of tilim, and then we'll uh, say a mishaberach filler. We'll say kapital chof, and um, we'll say kapital chof. Amaseach, Mizmira David, Jan Chor, the Nobi Im Soro, Isagev Koshem, Elhe Yakov, Ishlach Ezra Komikoide, Shamitsia in Isadeko, Iske Kolmin Hesecho, Velosho Yedash Naselo, Eton of Hochil Vavecho, Sosho Yamale, the Ranan of Ishua Secho, Shem Elhein and Nidgail, Yamale, Adino Kolmish Ali Secho, Ati Yodati, Kiashia, Adino Meshihoi, Anehu Mishme Kodshoi, Igvores Yeshi Eminoi. Ela Vorechev, Ela Basusim, and Achnum Shema de Noel Henu Nazkir, Emma Korov, and a follow, and Achnu Kamno Vanis Eidod, Adino Yishi or Melach Yanenu Yem Kareno. We've been saying up to each filler, Chof of Base and Samachtes and Kuchnun, Rabbi Lu mentioned today also to say the Rebbe's capital, which is also very relevant. 
But one, when we were saying um, this morning, Tilim Shabbos Mavorachim, I found Capital Aintes very um, relevant. Um, so also another one, uh, also in uh, in Capital Nunches, there's a couple of mentions of Hamas, uh, Hamas Nochosh, Hamas Lomoy. But I'd like to go through Capital Aintes, which I feel is. Um, very appropriate, and then we'll say that they get the filler of the Friday, which, the, which is attributed mm-hmm. to the Friday Kalender. Mizmela Osof, Elohim, Gobo, Goyim, Benachal, Osecho, Timu, Esecho, Kochecho, Somo, Es Yeshalayim, Leim, Nosnu, Es Nivlas, Avodecho, Machol, Loif, Hashemoim, Sarchas, Yedecho, Lachai, Se, or its Shop, Kudom, Kamaim, Sviva, Es Yeshalayim, Ve, Inkoi, Ve, Inu, Herpal, Ishkenenu, Lag, Vokeles, Le Sviva, Seno. Admo ani noi tenach lo netzach, tivar kamoi eish kinosecho, shfoich hamosko el agoyim asher lo yere ucho, vial mamlocho is asher beshim kole koro, kiochel tiakoi bebes noveu he shamu, altisker lono avenis de shainim, mahe ye kadmunu rachamecho, kida leinu no aid, azreinu ole he shainu advakvich mecho, atzileinu vachapeir al chatisainu lmash mecho. Lomo yemru hagoyim ayeye leheyem, vodo abagoyim leineinu, nikmas dam apodecho hashafuch. Tove lefonecho enkas osir, kegoidol zreacho hoiseir b'nei semuso. Vohoshev lishchineinu shivasayim elcheikom, herposom asher cherfucho adeinoi, anachnu amcho v'tzei marisecho noide lecho leoilom, nedoi vodoi nesapet elosecho. I got this, came to my direction, um, this filler, which is a tribute to the Friedrich Rebbe from the times of the war. I'll say each piece and then translate into English as we go one, one piece after the other. Vishus Krias Ms. Mary Tehilim, Shamoram David Hamelech Olam Asholim, Vishus Phyllis Amchon Basis Amchi Israel, Tismali Rachamim, Alkol Amchon Basis Israel Hamadukoim, Ananim, Isuri Moves, Berov, and Kolos Vashivia. May it be your wish, Hashem, the strength of Yaakov, the holiness of Israel, that the Malochim and the angels. Uh, positive angels should bring forth to you the prayers of your your people and the merit of the reading of the verses of the of, of chapters of Tilim, which was said by David HaMelech of blessed memory, uh, in, in the merit of the prayers of your Jewish your people. You should be filled with mercy for your Jewish for, for your the house of Israel, of the base Israel, those who are broken, who are being tortured. In, in murderous torture, in, in in starvation, in exile, and in captivity. Avinu malkeinu, abeit el dam achenu veachiseinu hashafuch. Yichbushu rachamecho eskas chom yoleinu veyogelu rachamecho almidusecho. Our Father, our King, look at the blood of our brothers and sisters which has been shed, and may your mercy uh, overpower your anger from us. And may your mercy uh, override the, the other attributes. Ono of Horachamim, Chus Verachim, Albonecho, Miachadecho, Oshmoi Oison, based on Vazara, my son of Botaino Vazarenu, Miyad Hoivim, Hakom, Oleno, Alehem, Oleno, the Haliseno, of Rev Tuho, or Gretel Hastecho, Tatsu Oison, my son of Mikolro, with Suko, and Nego Machlo. Miro of Shevi or Vizo, Mikol Pachad, Mikol Tsar, Kol Hazedim, Karega Yevedo, Vokol Eve Amchom Heir Yekoresum. Oh, please, Father, merciful Father, have compassion and mercy on your children who, who see you as, as the one deity, um, protect them, their families, their seed, us, our families, our seed, from the enemies who are arising against them and against us to annihilate us with your great goodness and your, your your compassion your kindness save them and us from all evil and suffering illness p- p- plague um, ha- famine captivity plunder from any fear and any pain 
and all those who are willfully trying to uh, harm us should be uh, destroyed um, immediately and all the enemies of your uh, people should be uh, annihilated speedily. Oh, please, Father, compassionate, um, merciful, protect your Jewish people wherever they are, and with your holy name you should exalt them and save them and because of your great mercy. As it says, Apostle Hashem is a merciful God, and he will not let, let, let loose of you, and he will not destroy you. He will not forget the covenant which he swore to our forefathers. Oh, one who is uh, living and always exist or, or existing, perform for us miracles and wonders in the merit of your, our holy Torah and redeem your people, your heritage, the Israel, the house of, of Israel, from our enemies, confuse the, the scheming of those who are rising against us, uh, our children, our, our, our sons, our daughters, wives, and little ones. Uh, remember your children, your sons and daughters who are looking, uh, anticipating your, your salvation the whole day. And may it be before you, before you should, and before your countenance, our suffering, our toil, and see our pain, battle, our, our uh, quarrels, and they should all know that you are the Holy One for our Eden and their Savior. Please, O Father, our God of our strength, have mercy on us and on all your Jewish people all over the world and lighten for us the pain of the pangs of Mashiach and send to us the, holy, the righteous Mashiach to gather in our dispersed from the four corners of the earth and they will reach uh, and bring us, lead us, standing uh, upright to our to our land, and there we will serve you in the house of God in Yerushalayim, in the holy city. Amen to Amen. And don't forget also to add in Stoker, and I wish you all a good avoch, and we should hear Basura's tapes. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Diane Raskin. Thank you.